also take us through uh, exploring, examining, and focusing on some of those challenges we're currently facing in the country, uh, security-wise. We've got uh, retired Captain Omar Ali here with us, uh, security consultant. Now, good to see you again. Good Thank morning. Coming on. Good morning. Uh, we also do have Philip Agbesa. He joins us from Abuja. He's a human rights activist. Thank you for joining us as well, Philip. Uh, Captain, let me start with you. Later. Right. H having heard. The National Assembly, you know, when they did invite the IGP, the cor our correspondent there was saying, well, they hope the Senate, the National Assembly will not invite the IGP again, hoping that all of this will, you know, become history. But from what you have seen us put on ground, how we are approaching this, do you see this becoming reality such that this problem should go away sooner rather than later? I, I hope, I sincerely hope it does. And uh, I'm encouraged by seeing an IG that will oblige a request by the Senate to show up. That shows you that there is now grounds for communication and where he can communicate his needs and they can respond his needs and we can move to the next stage, which is execution. Where you have an IG who won't even go so there won't even be communications. Then how do we move? So it's encouraging to see that the present IG has breached that void between the two stakeholders. And now they can meet and reason, and we move from there. How but helpful do you think this, this meeting within the Senate, how helpful do you see it um, in the process, in the whole process of uh, fighting insecurity? Well, it, it all depends on the IG himself and, um, by, and by extension, his own chieftains. If I had the opportunity to have the ears of the Senate, I will be looking at a situation where first I will task my men to give me a scope of what exactly we can see ourselves achieving immediately. You can call them quick fixes because we're in dire straits. It's so bad now that generals and elites have taken over rail, which is meant to be mass transit from Kaduna to Abuja. It's so bad now that the ordinary, ordinary man cannot get a ticket except he wants to stand. And probably if we don't peg these things, We'll have to start seeing people sit on the train, as they do in other parts in those days, <laughs> to get a ride. So the police will have to first and foremost put their acts together. Quick fixes. When I say quick fixes, we're talking of things that can be done instantly, immediately, to bring about succor to those who are going to use the roads. And these quick fixes are not difficult. It's just about putting the right people on the right tables, from top down to bottom. Even the right drivers in the right seats and the right legs in the right boots along that express, it can be done. Well, let me ask Philip. Philip, uh, you know, for those who believe that uh, we not just having the fact that we don't have the right people in the right places, by the actions that they've taken over time, which is why we're here today, that needs to change, getting the right people who will take the right steps. Do you think otherwise? Uh, well, in, in life it is uh, always good that, uh, of course, a doctor works in an hospital and an engineer works on the road on a beauty project. Nothing will work if we decide you know, to fix uh, round pegs in square holes. Uh, but I think uh, in Nigeria there seems to be a lot of emphasis on the role of security agencies in curbing and uh, helping to ameliorate uh, the challenges that usually arise from security breaches. Uh, there are other factors. What the security agencies basically are to do are more or less like corrective measures, like surgical operation. Uh, we, as members of the society, uh, we have a great role to play uh, in ensuring or in putting in place preventive uh, measures to ensure that we don't even get to this point. Uh, some of this uh, situation today, uh, President, uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo uh, didn't actually create the militancy that he met in the Niger Delta. Uh, then President 
uh, 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 Yaradwa also didn't create the security situations he met on ground. Same goes for pre former President Kulok Jonathan, who also did not create the Boko Haram situation that he met on ground. And that also goes for President Muhammad Buhari, who also did not create the security situations that are being tackled today. Uh, I think the major issue uh, has to do with the breakdown of value system in the society and inability of government and the people to actually you know, rise up to their responsibilities and obligations to other citizens uh, in the country. Uh, for instance, the current spate of banning tree or, or, or kidnapping in the Northwest is something that people, you know, uh, has been going on for quite a long time in Nigeria. It was in the Niger Delta region. From the Niger Delta, uh, it went to the Southeast region. And from the Southeast today, we now have it in parts of the North Central and, you know, becoming a very serious problem. All right, Philip, I need to butt in. We need to go to break, but we'll come back to you when we can return in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, Philip, uh, let me uh, understand your point earlier. Are you saying that we need to stop focusing on the role and responsibilities of security agencies and talk about how the value system is a causative factor to what's going on. Is that your point? In, um, uh, you, you see, both uh, have to work in Paris Passu. Uh, just like each time there is a breakdown of law and order in the country, uh, the security agencies are invited. And things begin to look like every other business of the Senate uh, is about inviting people. I also believe that as a government, uh, there is a role uh, for the Senate to play in terms of ensuring that on a day-to-day basis, the system is also going. And uh, let me quickly also make a point here, because I recall uh, that there's still a proposal... I need to understand. To you, you haven't shed some Nigeria. light on this matter, Philip. So, I need to understand your point. Are you exonerating these, the security chiefs from what's going on in terms of the ability or otherwise to carry out their responsibilities? E, e, yeah, I do not think that uh, the security chiefs have been, uh, been inducted uh, by their action or inaction, and the question of exonerating uh, anyone does not really arise here. If we are talking about uh, responsiveness and uh, you know, how the state uh, has reacted, you know, proactive measures in place to ensure that some of these uh, issues are curbed, then uh, I think it is also good that uh, we state it categorically clear that the security uh, chiefs and the security agencies, to a very large extent, have been able to live up to their responsibilities in terms of tackling some of these issues. Uh, that will have just hang on. of law and order. Let me, let me bring it back here. We'll come back to you on that. My apologies, but... Do you share the same view? No, I don't. I don't from the perspective of efforts and results. We cannot say in all sincerity <clears throat> that the amounts invested in our security, the results we see are commensurate to the amounts. And the amount invested is not where the problem is. If more is invested and things are not done differently, you will get the same results. Is that the now, fault of the security chiefs? What do you call a security chief? A security chief is someone who secures you. If, if your team loses a match, does it matter whether they use substandard football boots or they didn't have the right breakfast? The coach will have to go. There is responsibility where there is right. When you call the security chief, it gives you a lot of rights, a lot of command, and it comes with a lot of responsibility. For blame or for glory, responsibility. So basically, if I came to you, you're wearing a nice suit, by the way, and if I came to you and told you to sew one for me like that, and I gave you the money you required to do it, I expect it. And if you do not give it to me, then you haven't done it. We'll have to let you go and get someone else. You see, we're not the first country to have this myriad of problems, you see. Malaysia had it. China had it. 
Israel had it. Sri and Lanka. In, Sri Lanka had it. In those times, when they were in such dire straits, they had to bear fangs. I'm sorry. Whoever wants to cry about this, you just do that. But then in Africa, we believe that if you say your child won't cry, then that child will make you cry. We are not into times for palliatives. We are not into times for, no, can you do it? What do you require to do it? But you've had this, this conversation, and these were your submissions, I, I remember, months, uh, months Absolutely, back, absolutely. Do you think that um, perhaps the authorities are listening and hear you when you say that there has to be a change of guard, and that hasn't happened this time, and the security situation has actually worsened, and it looks as if it may just turn around with the IGP meeting with the Senate. How do you weigh all of this together? To my brothers, to my brothers in the Senate and the National Assembly, I want them to understand something. Despite all we say, I'll go back again to my African proverb, which says, okay. That which your ears refuse to heed, your eyes will see. see it. I saw a member of the house stand before the house and lamented. He lamented that it's so bad that he saw a one-star general whose convoy had to bring him to the railway station and he had to take a coach to Abuja. Now tell me, what kind of indicator is that? You see, motivation need not be pleasant. There are times you have to motivate people by taking out what you call the cushion. No soft landing. You either swim or we sink. We're at that state. Who can do the job, get it done, or we'll have to let you go? Could and there, be, could there be some information that security personnel who are you know, sitting at it now are aware of that we are not aware of, which is occasioned some of the things that they're, the actions that they're taking? I don't think I, so. I don't think so. We're just having this habitual, we are so into it now, it's, it's nature. We have this habitual inclination to stereotypes. Let me take the Abuja um, Kaduna Express for you. It's about 300 kilometers, okay? I say three hours at 100 kilometers per hour. Fine, 300 kilometers can be manned inch by inch. All you have to do is to just split it into 10 kilometers. 10 kilometer segments will give you 30 segments. And if you decided to make it zones of 50 kilometers each, you have six segments. And those six segments will draw whatever strength of men you require. Now look at the kidnapper. I'm decomposing this thing now. I'm doing security 101 here. Average human being can walk one kilometer in 12 minutes. Last time I checked, that's like five kilometers in an hour. The fastest person is Hussein Bolt. He does like 9.58 seconds in 100 meters, 400 meters. So between the fastest and the average, what's the mean, what's the median? So within the segments, if an, if an event happens there 10 minutes ago, I pick a map and a compass, I'm going to draw at a five the kilometer radius. radius. And when I do that, all I need is just one little craft or drone to do a surveillance, and I'm going to find them. And this is the challenge because, you know, we've heard some of the uh, to top them. People in those areas, including some, you know, governments, say, look, many of these places where these kidnappings happen, you have some sort of security checkpoints, you know, this joint effort checkpoints by security agencies. Yet, this happens. That's what I'm saying. It happens because, as I said, things are not tracked properly. It's either you deliver or you don't deliver. Chamberlain, if you were heading a team, and I called you and I said. How much time do you think to do X, Y, Z? And you say, I need two hours. And I say, you know what? I'm giving you four. In four hours' time, can you tell me it's done? You say, fine. What's your budget? You say, you need five naira. And I say, you know what? Take seven naira, 50 kobo. If you are not telling me it's done in four hours' time, then I'll have to look for someone else. And you're also going to go back to your own lieutenants and say, you know what? I have four hours to do this. Ordinarily, we can do it in two. I'm giving you two hours, 30 minutes. Like that, like that, like that. You have to track performance. And once you track performance, 
how do you know things have been done? Results. There must be key performance indicators. There must be milestones. Look, these things are not rocket science. We must begin to bring what you call corporate governance into even security operations. Mr. Abese, let me ask you this. Uh, there was a comment made here by um, uh, Captain Aliu that, uh, you know, maybe it's time for government to change strategy, bear fangs if necessary. How do you react to that? Well, uh, I'm afraid I don't know what uh, Captain Umar means by best hands, but from the clip we watched not quite long, we saw the liberation of Gamburu Ngala, which was actually carried out by this current set of military uh, chiefs who went to Gamburu Ngala to reclaim our territories from Boko Haram, Sebuti, other local government area, more than uh, three states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the control of Boko Haram. I'm sure he's not talking about the military that actually reclaim uh, those communities. I'm sure uh, Captain Umar was actually uh, not referring to the uh, 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 set uh, of military uh, chiefs that have helped us to clear Boko Haram out of this place. Let, let, me, uh, let me clear this. Let me, let, me, let me help you understand what I asked. He said that we should adopt the kind of carrot and stick approach to fighting security. Bear fangs, not best hands. Bear fangs if necessary. How do you react to that? Yes, uh, the security services are not the only uh, agencies that will mitigate in, you know, in solving the security situation. There are other channels and approaches within. Uh, for instance, I take you to the issues in Zafara State. Other actors have actually, you know, acted negatively on this to give us this. So uh, we cannot just sit down and conclude because one analyst has suggested, you know, uh, an approach. What about the other key players in providing security and in ensuring that there is security of life and safety? The role of the governors, the political leaders, the religious leaders, and even the common citizens, we all have one role or the other to play. And I think what is important is for everybody, all the actors, you know, to actually play their role responsibly. If we do this, I'm very sure we'll not even get to the point where there will be banditry. Uh, the people kidnapping others on the uh, highway are not just doing it. Some places are doing it as a result of poverty. Some places are doing it as a result of unemployment. And it is at the last stage. Really? It's just like what when a man's body is already uh, Mr. Agbese, what will be the responsibility of the people? You said that everyone needs, has a role to play. Let's talk about the, the locals, you know, in, in these areas where these insecurity issues occur. What should be their own responsibility? Or are we leaving, are they, do you, are you accusing them also of collision? Adrian, people must be ready to provide information to security agencies. In some situations, like have been in given information to security agencies over the time. People have been given yes, information yes. over time, and what has come mm. out of it? Yes, in, 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 no, in, in, in Zafara State, there have been allegations that traditional rulers and politicians, you know, who participate in illegal gold mining activities, are equally acting negatively on this, and that is because they have not performed the rules and responsibility, or what is required of them in that status that they occupy in the society properly. Uh, if they do that, you know, if, if they do that uh, well, with a responsibility entrusted in their hands, then things will be better. All right, so Mr. Agbese, uh, let me understand the point. I mean, earlier you did say something point. in passing. When you say you don't understand, is it because one analyst says something? I mean, are you referring to Captain Omar because he's a retired captain of the army? Are you suggesting he doesn't know what he's talking about or what? Yes, it does not mean, of course, he has suggested that earlier that not everybody in the military, you know, knows it. And he could also be one of the persons who does not know it. So the fact that he has said it does not make him an authority or does not mean that what he has said to us, we are going to take it hook, like, hook line and sinker. Uh, what I'm saying in essence is Mr. that... Mr. Agbese, okay, okay, society, he, he needs to respond. Let me... Trained, and there are people who just hang on, hang on. We'll come to you, Mr. You go ahead and respond, please. Uh, let me get you out of the woods. Based on what I've said, I can see you are off grid. When I talk about results and bearing fangs, it doesn't apply to security men alone. A doctor is a security man, do you know that? Yes. The civil defense man is also a security man. And until 
we begin to match results with effort, we won't get anywhere. We bury, in fact, burying dead bodies is like a staple today, three times daily. That's the average, three times daily. We need to burn the mess out of everyone because we've gotten there. I do not subscribe for now to any pacifist approach to these monsters we call bandits. What are you suggesting? What I'm suggesting is simple. We have to go in there and make a statement across board to the practitioners, to the bandits, to everyone. If you go and read history of these security problems, when the, when the, when the security problems were, were, were rife in countries that went through them, the authorities, the leaders had to take a very, very solid and aggressive stance. Malaysia, Sri Lanka, China, the things they did may not sound pleasant to the pacifist mind, but they needed to do it for the good of all. Have you also considered the human rights implications? The human rights implications I respect. But let me tell you something. Those human rights implications that we are looking at, Whose human rights are we looking at now? The bandits or the poor citizens? I have always spoken about something. Much as we talk about human rights, can we balance it and do also some talking about human wrongs? There are fundamental human wrongs, you know? So you don't sit there and tell me things about military or no military. I'm talking about results. It's, it's the collateral results. damage angle of it that, you know, you know, we, don't forget, collateral damages are like spiraling effects. They come from the center. What we need now is to address the center, and that's why I mentioned quick fixes. Mm. Quick fixes. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a roller coaster effect now, downhill. We mm. must first of all peg it and stop it. And we can do that with persuasion. Yeah, so Mr. Agbesta, some of the countries you mentioned, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, We've seen them recently sack their security chiefs as a result of one little thing or the other. What is wrong in us doing the same thing if we're not getting results? Uh, well, uh, the approaches uh, adopted by countries. For instance, my colleague here talked about uh, the question of uh, using hard tactics without recourse uh, to the rights of the people involved. Uh, we are all living witnesses to some of these tactics adopted by our military. I remember when uh, then Lieutenant General Hedrika uh, was the Chief of Army Staff. And, uh, Mr. Agbese, if you can hear me, that is Belgium, not my question. Uh, the question is, what is wrong with sacking the security chiefs like some countries have done recently if we are not getting results? Are you not interested in results? We, we are all interested in results, and nobody is saying uh, anybody who has not done his job should be sacked. Uh, I'm sure the president and the commander-in-chief knows the writing. Uh, he has a security briefing, and he knows exactly. Uh, we cannot say what uh, has happened in Sri Lanka is exactly the same uh, with what is going on in Nigeria today. So uh, if the president of Sri Lanka you know, has been briefed and uh, he saw the need to sack someone who has not done his job, in the first instance, there's no need for anybody who is not doing his job or who has not done his job to be anywhere for any reason. So, of course, I will support situations where those who have not done their jobs rightly should be sacked. Well, so if, uh, because so li life... They, they, they can be sacked if they are not doing their work. So lives are lives. You. Yeah, you see, it's simple. Take Moriki Zamfara, where those girls were taken. I was heartbroken. We've already had lessons learned, if there is anything like that in there. We've had schools where girls are raided and our daughters taken away. Must it happen in your state before you learn? Leave that out of it. If I was Mr. President, and good enough, he also has a security background or a military background. If you came to me and told me your area was secured, I'll ask you, can your wife and children live there? If they can't, it's not secured. You see, results are not about the briefs you receive. Results are about what you see on ground. If you give the average Zamfara, you know, those, those little, little enclaves, those rural areas, 
Just give the average person there a blank sheet and tell him to score his own personal security on a scale of 10. How does he feel? Does he feel secure? That's your result, not the briefs you write for me. All right. We'll come back to this in a moment. Uh, stay with us. All right, welcome back. We're winding down now. Mr. Agbessia, let's get your concluding thoughts on what we should be doing moving forward. Yes, uh, if we understand the enormity of the challenges that are on ground, I'm sure we are going to appreciate uh, the sacrifices of our security agencies and the efforts that have been put in place so far. Uh, because it's just like saying that uh, if your child has cost 73 and uh, his inability to make up 27 for some silly you know, question that he has missed, you want to uh, 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 conclude that the child who has caught 73 over 100 has done badly or for that reason he should repeat the class. I'm sure my colleague in the studio, uh, Captain Man, wouldn't do that to his child to a very large extent, having understood the large security situation that we have been seeing. Speak for yourself in this case. the efforts that we see that these guys are making, I, I am very, very confident that they are doing their best and, of course, we just need to give them the benefit of the doubt uh, for us to get quickly to does this does this uh, this 73 percent you're saying or this past mark you're giving to them does that mean or suggest that they've done their best to the extent that as he suggested their wives and kids can ply that Abuja Kaduna road without any escorts or they can live in some of those serious areas that we're talking about here is that what you're suggesting there is there is no perfect security situation anywhere in the world. In fact, even in heaven, uh, the devil took advantage of some of the silly loophole to do what he did. Sir, please, you haven't been to heaven, so let's, let's the stay where we are at heaven. the moment. So, back to the situation on ground, I think to a very large extent, no one can conclude that the security agencies have done their best. There's still more to be done. And it is not only about putting people on the road with guns, but we as citizens and the government must also ensure that the unemployed youths, you know, are given something to do. So that right. a large chunk of these persons who are available, you know, for bandits or sponsors of banditry and kidnapping, you know, to rent and recruit them into uh, their camp can actually be reduced. All right. So everyone has got a role to play. Captain. You see, the situation we find ourselves in right now has what you can call a cocktail of solutions. What is required now is quick fixes, instantly, now, now. So we have what you call immediate, middle term, and long term. Most of the time we take off and talk really about mid term and long term. Whereas for as long as we've been talking like this now, it's enough time for 40 people to have been killed. One time president of the United States, Truman, said something. He said, you carry a big stick and you speak with a small voice. The threats we are eyeballing and eyeballing to, they are driven by unemployment and hunger, I understand. But before you can even begin to bring them to the table to talk about solutions, you have to put the fear of God in them. That's my own position. You go out there and make a very aggressively ruthless statement. Israel has done it. Malaysia did it. And that's why they are there and thriving today. So basically, once we are able to stabilize, and it's not only about the bandits, it's even about the fifth columnists in the security agencies, the lethargists, okay? We must be able to burn the mess out of us. We are naked, believe you me, as we stand today as a nation, national security-wise, we can deceive ourselves about this, but we are naked. If by 2030 we have not been able to put solid things on the ground, then I'll recommend a document for you, Failed State 2030. Go Google it and read it. you know where I'm coming from. Food for thoughts. Uh, Richard Captain Ali Omar, thank you for coming on this morning. And uh, uh, Philip Agbesta, human rights activist, thank you also for coming. I thought I was going to see Army, because I kept on hearing my colleague, my colleague. Okay, <laughs> that, that's the show today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Osa. I'm Kim Bowman. And I'm Ayawaki Day saying have a beautiful day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.